we're back again. How you doing guys? So, finally get some nice weather, time to step out of the house and get creative. And uh, so, I rolled over to the yard, brought some cans, and I thought maybe we'll do another little example of hitting off the homies, showing some love, showing people that you care about them by writing their name on a wall. Because it's what we do, right? Again, I got a great menagerie of shades. So before I get started, let me give you a quick little rundown quick rundown of all the different colors we'll be using today. So first we have Current, and if you haven't used Current, it's probably one of the most banging purples you've ever used. It used to be known as Cess Violet. So if you've used Cess Violet in the past, and you see 042 Current, it's the same exact color, just a different name. Gorgeous, gorgeous shade. It's very much like the Lakers Purple. I know I said that about the golden yellow being the Lakers Yellow. This is the Lakers Purple right here. Of course we got Traffic Red. Cow 77, one of the best greens I've used. And this is what I used in the live video yesterday when I was hitting up off all the homies. YouTube.com, I saw you on the live feed, I hit you off. And of course, uh, Cliff Green, which is probably one of the illest greens. Piglet Pink, Grape, which I like, Aqua Light. You know, I've been fucking with these Aqua Lights a lot. Clear Blue, Shock Blue, Dark Gray Neutral, and I think this is Golden Yellow at the end. So basically, we got some hot colors, we got some cool colors, we got some grays to break it up, and you know, we got some good greens to give a complimentary look to your piece. Because remember, you want to get outside of that color spectrum from your inline to your outline to give yourself that contrast that you're looking for. You feel me? Why don't we get started sketching out this piece with a new cap that we haven't reviewed yet? Step one. All right, so we're gonna have to go over someone to do this piece. And remember, whenever you go over somebody, you have to really take into account there's graffiti etiquette involved. Is it okay to do at the spot? Do you know the person? Or if you don't know them, are you able to burn them? Or is it socially acceptable to do what you're doing? Also, are you gonna be letting them hang out or are you gonna completely go over their piece? There's lots of things you have to consider when you're doing this. And you know, it's there's no set rule. There are some set rules, actually. I take that back. <clears throat> there are some basic set rules. Make sure you cover somebody well. Make sure you burn them. And, uh, you know, don't overly disrespect them, I guess. But there's other rules that are there too, you know. We don't want people going over memorial pieces, you know. The, the whole idea you want to go into is if you're going over somebody, you don't want to disrespect them. And so what we're going to do here is go over this piece that's right here. And it says G-O-L-S, Goals. And uh, this happens to be a homie of mine, and I just happen to be the curator of the walls here. So obviously I can go over whoever I want. Nevertheless, I still should respect the other artists that are in the yard because I give them respect, they give me respect, we respect each other, we create a culture. So, I'm gonna go ahead and go over this dude. I wanna be fully respectful of the artists I went over. So what I'm gonna do is first take a flick of his piece and post it on the internet, because that is a way of helping him get ups. And I think it's the polite thing to do before you go over somebody. At least give them one last chance, because you never know. They might have forgotten to take a flick of their piece. And I would appreciate that if I forgot, and I do that sometimes. So. What I'm going to do first is take a photo of this, just to, just to keep it on record, put it up on the internet, because as we all know, whatever you put on the internet is on the internet forever. So we'll take a photo, and when I'm done with that, I'll show you how to go over someone in a respectful way. I'll get right back to you. I got a quick little snap, so I can go ahead and upload that onto my Instagram account and share it with everybody I know, and give him some shine at the same time. So let's go ahead and get cracking. I know you guys want to get down to the meat of things. <clears throat> now, what I like to do is whenever I paint a piece, you know, as you know, I like to switch up my name, but I think it's really important for like maybe every five or six pieces, every 10 pieces, write one of your homies' names. Give them some ups. Not only does it help you learn about different letters, it might help motivate them, especially if they're particularly lazy. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start cracking with the lettering. And again, this is my homie. He writes demo, D-E-M-O. He's a, he's a European cat, very, very cool dude, and uh, I want to give him a respectful level. When you go ahead and start outlining your piece, make sure what you do, you're going to want to give some room for your bubble splash, right? And you also want to give some room for your 3D, and then you need to do your fill from there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this probably about right here, loose here, and I'll start building it from there. But I got plenty of room to work here. Well, let's start with the D. Now I've taught you guys how to build bars using the, the tag thing from before. So remember I did this thing with the tag? And then you go ahead and fill the bars in like that. 
but I already know how to make the bars, so I'm just gonna do them. All right, that's a basic D. Maybe make this a little chunkier right here. And I'm gonna go for nice thick letters to make sure I go over him evenly. All right, let's go with an E. Now the E, you're gonna have a little bit that sticks out the back. So it'll probably get taken over by the D. But make sure you move your E over just a tad because if you start, like let's, let's say you start your E right here, then the back end of your E is gonna be all behind the D. So I would, if you're unsure, start with the bottom part of your E first because it will overlap. I mean, depending on your style, of course. But you at least wanna give yourself some bit of room to get cracking. So now the top of the E is over here instead of over here. Now another thing I want to do is uh, I just realized I like the bottom of the D so I'm gonna copy that style and do a more flat bottom E like that. And I think that will create greater, greater continuity. And what this also gives me is a chance to build my next letter off of the E. You feel me? All right. So now that bottom of the E is gonna be this bar for the M. Does that work for you guys? Now we can do the other part of the M, which I'll make a little more funky. Cause you know, why not? And now we'll do the O. Since this has a bit of an old school flavor, I think I'll do a bit of an old school O. with a bit on top, which will give us an opportunity to maybe do some type of um, funky funky business, you know what I mean? Just some funky business coming off of here. So we'll leave that there. But you know, again, make sure you leave yourself a little bit of room, even though you got overlaps. Overlaps are good. Just try to leave yourself a little bit of room in case, because these letters, they, they want to breathe. They want to live. So, <clears throat> all right, I think we have the basic chunky fill structure part of the piece done. So while we're here, what I thought I'd do is show you guys a couple caps so you can see how they work. What I have here is the Flame Blue Super Skinny Cap. I haven't tried them very much on the Molotow yet, so my opinion on them, I don't really have one. So we're gonna go ahead and do a couple quick lines with it in the fill, because we're gonna cover it anyways, but it'll give you a chance to see what this cap looks like. Now again, the Flame Super Skinny Oh man, that's beautiful on the Molotov, holy shit. Okay, I know this was manufactured for the flame can, but it's almost like a German Outline 3 on the Molotov. Look at that. Extremely skinny. One thing about it though that I do notice is it has a bit of a delay in the spray. And I think it's just so pressure sensitive and I'm just having to get used to it, but man, it makes very, very clean, skinny lines. All right, I haven't featured this cap in videos much, and I think we're gonna have to do that some more. So let's go ahead and clear this cap out, because I gotta use a fat cap to fill this, and it's the only one I brought with me of this cap style, and I don't want it to clog. So just invert the can, and just spray it till it's clear. You only lose about a line worth about this long when you do that. But it, what it'll do is just help you preserve the can. And sometimes there's a little bubble on the exit pupil right there. So just give it a quick little blow, clear that out. And we'll set that aside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, uh, a yellow fat cap, also known as the Clash Fat, and we'll do a nice big thick fill here with the Molotov Premium. So just bear with me one second. What I got here is uh, well, Saddam had the mother of all wars. This is the mother of all fat caps. So <laughs> this here is uh, an extremely fat spray. The thing I really like about it is unlike a lot of fat caps is it creates a very, very clean line. Sometimes fat caps spurt a lot, but this one it just seems to atomize the spray so, mm, just so beautifully. And again, it's the yellow ultra fat. Let's go ahead and mount it on here. And as you can see, it's extremely wide spray, but look at that. Look how smooth it comes out of the can. Look at that. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. Look at that. I haven't tried this cap with a sect adapter yet, 
but here's the thing. I've tried um, basically most most fat caps with the sect adapters that are common, like pink caps, um, Euro fat, silver fats. The one thing I would say about the sect adapter and fat caps is it, it, it tends to lose some of its flair. It loses a bit of its magic, if you will. And, and for me, I prefer just the New York fat caps that comes on the sect adapter fat caps because what it does is it creates a nice thick spray and it's not much different than the actual New York fat cap on other cans. I don't know if it's because of the way the cap's designed but that's just my experience with it. Nevertheless, when it comes to thin tips, use any thin tip you want on a sect adapter because the way it loses some of its spray creates an extremely, extremely fine line. Great for piecing. Now, back to this cap. I rather like it much. But again, I would not use this on a sect adapter. I probably, I probably would. If you really want these dot caps to work as they're intended, you kind of need to put them on a, on a native can. That's my experience. Maybe someone disagrees with me, I don't know. All right, let's go ahead and get film in here. Beautiful. Now here's the drawback of the fat cap. You do get a very thick line, but you do run out of paint quicker. That's for sure. But this isn't bad, I almost filled up a whole piece, plus doing the outline, because the outline uses some color. But like all good Boy Scouts, I got two cans of the purple. So I got another one on deck. So let's go ahead and make sure our can is thoroughly agitated, even though I already shook it. But again, I gotta, I gotta repeat some of these narratives, you know, because this could be the first time you're watching one of our videos. You might have never seen our video before. So I need to remember to remind you. So, again, shake the cans thoroughly. Let's get cracking. All right, just go ahead and start filling in your O. Looking good, looking good. All right, so this is a good opportunity to take a, take a little step back and look at everything. So again, I just ad-libbed is that ad-lib? Just a quick little thing, you know, you're like, hey, I got a little extra room on the side. Just add a little bit of flair to it, you know what I'm saying? You got your letters, you got your letters going a certain way, but then sometimes you just want to add a little bit of something to, I guess the arrow is almost like something that protects your piece, you know what I mean? Like this is a, this is protecting me from this arrow piece over here. This, like this shit is so hot. It's like I'm fire and shit, right? So I, I got to have a little spike to protect myself from, it, right? It just gives you a little bit more flavor. Don't forget to always add something in there. Arrows, bits, little funky doodads. Just use your imagination, you feel me? I gotta defend myself from Eddie Money over here. So I gotta I got drop something on this side. So I'll probably just put another arrow. Why not? This is an easy thing to do. Anybody can do this. I got customers that are like 10 years old that are better than me. And that's what I wanna see. The next generation, schooling, schooling the previous generation. All right, beautiful. Let's make this a little thicker right here. A little bit thicker. I think I want that a little thicker. Now this piece is so fat in this small space, we're not gonna have a lot of room for an outer, but yeah. 
we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and start doing that. We'll fill it in. All right, guys, so we're gonna be using Sweat Traffic Red for our outer splash color. I think it'll complement the purple really nicely. And when we're done doing that, I'll use some of the uh, some of the cliff green to do my, my outer halo, which will really pop off the red and the purple nicely, I think. It'll very, very, very good complementary colors. So let's go ahead and start just filling in our splash. And again, what I've said about the splash before is just to kind of gesture it in, you feel me? Just gesturally do it. And um, let's go ahead and put that flame super skinny back on because I think, I think it'd be a good time to just kind of see how some of these other colors rock, right? Already, I've decided that I don't want to put the arrow here. I will figure something, we'll, we'll figure something out. Let me just put the splash color in. That's what we're gonna do. I have a great idea. We're gonna put a very skinny 3D on this, because I don't have a lot of room. Because um, I, got, I got punked out of my wall today. Got some guys that came, <laughs> came and punked me out of my wall. <laughs> I see you over there, Sliz. I see you. <laughs> no, man, we got, we got, you know, these guys are probably like 10 years younger than me, but they're the next generation, you know, and they came here to paint, and they came and did a really nice piece, and, and they, I, I was just so amazed that they just, like, they had that pluck. They just were like, yo, I'm just going to rock this wall, and watch out, fool. <laughs> Step to the shed. <laughs> I respect kids that do that. They rock a piece, they did their best work, now they're chilling like villains. So let's get back to cracking over here. So again, this is that flame super skinny cap. This is definitely something, if you use the sect adapters as well, I would recommend trying this on those, because I think this will be a phenomenal skinny cap on the Rusto cans. I don't have one on me to use it with, but we'll cover that in a future video. After all, this is a mostly Molotov video today. Now remember, I'm gonna have a 3D here, so we'll go ahead and leave that blank. We're just throwing our splash in right now. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect, I'm far from it. You might call me scratch and dent. That'd be a good way to describe it. Like a really nice washing machine that has a scratch on the side. <laughs> all right sick all right this my this my buds this is probably going to be 3d up to here this might be a little mini 3d right there so let's go ahead and fill this part red does that does that make sense to you guys i'm just kind of thinking ahead on the structure here you feel me because i'm doing i'm building this up like layers the splash is going to be the furthest thing back this is going to be the furthest thing in the front so i don't want them to interfere with each other you feel me so this will be the background. I'll draw a line here for my outer and then my 3D will go to the left like that. It might be smaller. It might actually be this much smaller. So let's go ahead and fill it in here. But like I always say, you got a built-in eraser in the can. Built-in eraser in the can. There's gonna be some splash here. So let's go ahead and fill this in. I imagine there'll be some 3D there and we'll have some 3D going like that. So we'll fill in the splash. Guys, I gotta tell you this flame super skinny is really, changing my life all right like I said I didn't really fuck with this cap too much before and uh, let me just kind of give you some insight of what I'm feeling now the thing I really like about this cap is it's not slow I don't like slow thin tips like gray dots gold dots and again this is personal preference so if you want to try them try them but this is my personal I like to paint fast this will go as fast as you go and for me, that's crucial because again, I grew up as a bomber kid, you know, I did throw ups and stuff. So I kind of have a loose style of painting. For me, this is a great choice. So again, guys, if you're rocking Rusto, your bomber type, but you want a thin tip, this might be your go-to. All right, so we might have a little splash here. This, we'll add a little splash up here as well. I'm not sure, that'll be 3D. We'll have 3D here. So we'll do some splash here like that. Look how, that, look how smooth that cap comes out, even for like a thin tip. Like you can fill with it. That's really cool. Because sometimes with thin tips, like you don't want to fill because it just takes too long. But if you just want to rock one, can, one cap on your Molotov can, this is actually a pretty good option. All right, six. So let's go ahead and do more splash out here. Just to offset 
and to fully cover again when you when you're going over somebody it's very respectful actually to completely cover their piece leaving it hanging out would actually be considered more disrespectful because it shows that you don't you know you don't respect them enough to to, to leave them wounded you know you're wound you're wounding their peace by going over them right so you don't want to add insult to the injury but that's what's cool about graffiti it's like the cycle of life you know things live they age and they die same thing with graffiti art it's the philosophical aspect of graffiti that's why I like it you know people are always trying to preserve mural and art and stuff like that and it's like well what about the fleeting nature of graffiti art? You know, it's you have to be there to catch it. You have to be there in the know. You have to know where to look for it. And I kind of do that with this wall because it's a hard thing to do because on a legal wall, it's hard to capture that. And I think the best way to do it is just to keep it rotating. You know what I'm saying? But you still got to follow the basic tenets of respect. So I think we got our splash filled in, Ed. I think we got plenty of color for that. Let's go ahead and start working on our fill colors. So I got a scrap can of this aqua light and uh, we went ahead and attached one of the, that same flame blue super skinny cap. I just want to see how it looked on the flame orange can, right? Yep, just like the Molotov, it comes out very, very fast and very, very clean. It doesn't seem to flare all that much. Oh, this can's empty. All right, sorry, that can was almost empty and I just got down to the bottom of it. So we're, it was one of my old scrap cans. So let's start over again. Same color, same cap. There we go. Oh man, that's beautiful. This can is a little low too, but you should be able to get some color out of it. Oh man. Again, we're going to be doing my standard bubble bottom. This is an easy way to just add a little extra flair to your piece. And the thing about filling, and again, I've mentioned this in other videos, but I like to drive the point home. When you're doing your fill, um, you can use any shape you want. Bubbles, squares, dots, triangles. I mean, it really doesn't matter. The one thing I would do is um, try to use like three shades that are in a similar vein of each other, like blues and purples or reds and pinks. And then you're gonna wanna use at least one or two colors that are complementary that are like on the other side of the color wheel, you feel me? So you wanna use like a green or a, an, an orange or something like that that would kind of offset everything. And that's how you really create that fantastic contrast. My buddy Ed had a really good idea that we should go check out uh, an art supply store and get a color wheel. I think I'm going to do that in a future video so I can show you guys how to pick out your colors. Because if you have a color wheel, it makes the process a whole lot easier, especially if you're not really good with color. I mean, I'm sure you're not the first one who's seen a piece that doesn't really pop even though it looks really good. It's because they probably don't see color that well. And in order to get over that, it really, really helps to use a color, uh, color wheel, you know, because then you can really see on the image how they react to each other so highly recommend a color wheel if you don't if you don't know color well get a color wheel but we'll do that in a future video oh here here's something interesting i don't need to do this right now but this is something you can do if you're fucking up your corners what i'm doing is doing a, a, a bubble right here in this corner and what you can do is when you go ahead and do your black you can come back with this color of the bubble and clean up that line. Does that make sense? We'll, we'll, we'll do that in a second. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But it's an easy way to fix your corner and have a little funk, a little funk in the trunk, if you feel me. Let me just put one here and then we'll get to the next color. Guys, I gotta tell you, I really love this aqua light. It's like a little bit teal, it's a little bit, oh, it's just beautiful. So I got a can of grape in the flame orange. And again, we're using that flame super skinny cap. I'm rather fond of it. I, I actually kind of feel like a dunce for not using it for so many months, but here we are, right? So anyways, what we're gonna do is go ahead and put a few little bits 
on the top part of our piece, you know, just to kind of shard it up a little bit for the fill. And I think this will, this will go well with the current fill because it's a lighter shade of purple and they'll do well together. Like I said, use a few colors similar and then use the complementary colors on top of that. So let's go ahead and start painting some little bits in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Just a skosh lighter, right? But beautiful, beautiful color. Uh-huh. All right, let's do a little 3D on this. Did I just clog the cap? Clog the cap. God damn it. All right, sorry guys. This was the only flame super skinny I brought with me and I just clogged it. But it lasted quite a while. You did a good job. This is not an unusual thing to happen with thin tips, especially since I didn't really shake my cans that well. But this is a real life situation. So this cap is clogged. We'll go ahead and set him down and, and oh, always be responsible with the trash. Make sure you throw it away. So we'll go ahead and set that down and we'll switch over to a, um, let's try this one out. This is the, uh, the Molotow Soft Blue Cap. I think we featured it in one video so far. We're gonna feature it again because it's a great option for these cans. Now, as you can see how, how, how thin this line is, the Molotow Blue will be a little bit thicker on this can, but it's still a very soft spray. So the characteristics aren't the same. Softer, it's a softer, wider spray would be the best way to describe it. Yep, looking good, looking good. We'll just do a line here like that, just to kind of break it up a little bit. The E needs one, that's for sure. There we go. Yeah, this cap definitely sprays quite a bit bigger, but still, very, very nice cap. Would I replace my New York fat caps with this? Probably not. Nevertheless, very, very nice cap. We could do this too, and just to give it a little bit more depth, use this same color to just maybe do a few little bubbles here and there. You know, little overlaps, if you will. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you guys a little technique too. Let me get these in here really quick and we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. That gives it a little bit more depth. Oh yeah. Maybe one over here. Man, graffiti is so fun. I always tell people, they're like, oh, I can never do graffiti, it looks so hard. And I'm like, if you are at all, anybody out there, if you are at all somewhat artistic, when you have a desire to have a hobby that gives you very, very quick, uh, you know, satisfactory results, because you gotta admit, I'm able to cover so much more surface with spray paint than you can with a paintbrush and create a piece of art so much quicker. It's a very satisfying medium to work with. I think we need something to kind of offset it a little bit. So let's take a look at through our cans here. Let's see, maybe this pink. This looks like piglet pink. This can's almost empty. There's about this much left in it. But I think we could do something with it. So we need to really offset these colors. So I got a can of the Piglet Pink and the Flame Orange. It's a little low, it's a little on the low side, but I think we have enough paint in here to do some really cool little stars or something. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna do some stars with it. That's what we're gonna do. Remember, stars are an easy way to do a fill in your piece. 
You used to draw them in third grade. I know you did. Everyone drew them. So just do the same thing, but with spray paint. Now the pink might take a few little more layers. Um, that's normal for pinks, especially if you're trying to cover a dark color like this orange. Uh, I like this purple. <laughs> especially if you're trying to cover a dark color just like this purple. But it's completely normal. The pink will go a little light, so I might do another layer over that. But it's a great shade that offsets the purple rather nicely. There we go. A little baby star. Of course, they are harder to do the smaller you get. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough. Good enough for government work. There we go. Put one up here. You know what this fill needs, guys? Just a skosh bit of green in here, right? We need some green. So that'll be the next color. doing right here and that'll be it for that pink for now hey Juju how you doing how you doing baby how you doing so I got a can of cacao 77 green this is one of my favorite greens and also I thought maybe we'd switch a few things up I haven't really uh, utilized this cap in video as much you guys been asking about it this is the universal outline skinny cap it's a banana style cap very, very popular because it can be utilized on so many different types of paint. Somehow they designed it to work with big, fat stem valves and the skinny ones. So it's a great choice for someone looking for an all-around. It is banana style, so it's kind of sharp. You do have to get used to that. But again, extremely popular cap, and it's very grippy. I'll definitely give it that. It's extremely, extremely grippy. Now this cap is definitely in the vein of the old school European outline caps. So it creates a nice, sharp line, as you can see. What I'm going to do is a big fat shard over this, just for the heck of it, right? A little 3D on it. I don't often use this cap a lot, but I know people really love it, so I thought it'd be good to go ahead and add it in the video here. Because what I like and what other people like are two different things. The one thing I'm not particularly fond of this cap is that um, I feel like kind of loosey-goosey with it whenever I use it. Like I don't feel like I have a very sharp control over it. And that might just be me. Maybe I'm just that toy. <laughs> That's a good I think it's just because it's so sharp on the end and it just, um, when you hit it, it can easily go, like it can easily turn directions, you feel me? See how like when you're doing that, and again, maybe it's just because I'm not used to using it. And maybe I should just use it more. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Put a little 3D in the bottom of this shard here. Yeah, I think that's what's happening when I use it. Like, I, I can feel my finger just trying to move it around in there. But it's a very thin cap. I think once I get used to it, I'll probably like it a lot more. It definitely sprays fast, I'll give it that. So we got some little bit pieces in here. And what this does is it gives me an opportunity to go back with the other previous colors that I used to go ahead and create more depth in it. Because what you want, is uh, you want your you want your colors and, and, and stuff overlapping, you feel me? So let's go ahead and take some of this light blue. Like I like how it goes over here, but maybe this dot is in front of here. Maybe there's a dot here too, why not? Let's give it depth. Give it the depth, yo. 
like right here, Ooh. it goes over it right there and right there. And you know what? My corner was kind of shitty there, so I just covered it up. <laughs> no one's perfect, especially me. That should be my motto. No one's perfect, especially me. So let's take some of the purple now. And again, we're using that, that uh, German Outline Universal cap. Let's go ahead and go over some of this stuff with it. Just to kind of create the layers and depth that will make it look really cool. I'll leave that over that. I don't want too much overlap on that part. Um, those are good, but let me, I'll put one here. That, that, sh that corner's kind of shitty. So let's cover up my shame. A pretty wild fill, if you ask me. Now let's get the pink and see. Am I covering any stars? I guess we're covering this star right here. There. Beautiful. Now let's stand back, take a look at everything. I got a, a can of Molotow Deep Black, which is their nice black outline color. Also fitted with the stock cap, that's the blue soft spray. I think it'd be a good opportunity to see how it looks for doing outlines on your lettering. Because we never use the stock tip, right? Very fine cap. And honestly, I used to hate on this cap a lot. But the more that I use it, the more that I like it. It's actually a pretty nice cap. That needs to go deeper. Yeah, something like that. Alright, we'll fix that. Now some of you are probably asking why I started with the middle. Um, no reason. It's just where I was standing. You can start wherever you want, you can do whatever you want. Like I always say, you're your own grandpa. All right, great. So let's go ahead and continue with our outline. And this is the D. Get the D done here. It's D day, baby. Get that there. Get that there. That there. I think we're gonna cut it off here that because I got to have a little 3D going over there. This here like that. Beautiful. Go ahead and fill that in because that's going to be 3D anyways. Let's see, that's gonna go over like that, and then like that, and that'll be for our, our uh, arrow here. Like that. Beautiful. And this comes here. Nice big round O. And I think I need to move this over so it's not too fat. Like that. And this will connect right there. Then, I think we have the basic outline done, so let's go ahead and start doing the 3Ds. Now I'm gonna be doing somewhat smaller 3Ds than what I normally do. And remember, imagine your piece getting hit with light from this direction, the shadow's gonna go that direction. So we're gonna be doing our 3D all going like that. Go ahead and fill that in right there. We'll fill this in right here. Looking good. Fill this in right here. A little 3D there. Fill it in. Don't look how beautiful this black lays down lines. Isn't it gorgeous? So smooth. 
Do yourself a favor and spring for one of these blacks one day. You'll you'll be you'll be so happy you did. Mm, just so nice to paint with. Go, little mini 3D there. Like that. that we'll go ahead and fill that in it's really starting to pop off the wall guys hope you're enjoying this I gotta say I sure do enjoy painting this I think one of these days I'm gonna just randomly pick someone from Instagram and just paint their PC letters for them I think that'd be a lot of fun I think that's why I like doing so many different words because the whole thing is you really you want to get yourself out of your comfort zone, you feel me? Like I know a lot of guys that, that are really good at piecing their name, like they can write their name really good and you know probably better than I could write their name, you know? But if you get them outside of their comfort zone, they just don't know what to do. And, and that's really where you want to challenge yourself, you know what I mean? That's where you want to be like, oh, I don't normally do these letters. But what happens is it cre creates a better artist, you know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and fill these in right here. A little 3D there. Don't forget that one. Oh yeah. Right there. Like this. Like that. There we go. Remind me. You can't talk to me through YouTube. Well, all right, so I got a quick, basic outline of the lettering. There's a few things we can do now. We can go ahead and start doing our shines, or we can do some cutbacks. And I don't do I don't do cutbacks a lot because sometimes you can do your cutback as your shine. You just have to do that step. But I do want to show you some cutbacks. So let me get a can of that purple, and I'll be right with you. I forgot one of my 3Ds. So let's go ahead and lace this in right here real quick. I'm, I'm very much known to forget a 3D here and there. Don't feel bad if you do too. All right, so let me move on to the next step. I don't do a lot of cutbacks in my pieces, but I think it's very important that we cover that just so you can understand what the concept of it is. And what a cutback is, is you do your fill, you do your outline, and sometimes the outline overlaps a little too far and you just wanna shave it back a little bit. That's what a cutback is. Like I said, it's like using your eraser in the can, but instead of erasing it, I guess you're bringing it back. Hmm. Anyways, it's a technique that comes in handy. So for example, you see this right here? Now, normally what I would do is I would just put a shine here so it doesn't really matter. Because again, I paint pretty loose, but I want to teach you guys the basic concepts of it. So, it's just that. It's that simple. It's just coming back with the other color and creating a sharper edge. Alright, seeing right here, we can do it as well. We can do a little cut back like that. And then here, cut back like that. And then here, cut back like that. And it just, you know, you're just sharp. Oh, I just hit it with my finger. That was good. Let's let that dry and I'll do that. But as you can see, I made the line much sharper, much better, except for that. We'll fix that too. It's all cutbacks, baby. It's all cutbacks. Fix that. Because you might paint differently than me. And I want you to have all the tools available to you when you want to do this, right? All right, that looks pretty good. I think we can move to the next step. All right, guys, so I hope that little uh, explanation of cutbacks helps you out a lot. We're gonna do it a few more times in this piece so you can see what I'm talking about. But the next step now is we're gonna do an outer outer. And what I have is Cliff Green, the Malto color Cliff Green. It's extremely vibrant. I think it'll bring out this piece so much more brightly and uh, it'll complement the colors really well. Again, we have the Malto soft blue cap on deck. So let's go ahead and start outlining this bad boy. Do a quick test right here. And as you can see, it's an excellent shade of green. And it's, as far as light greens go, it's probably one of the more thick ones. It covers very, very thick. So let's go ahead and boost some lines here. Now check this out. See, the, see how sharp this line is here? Down here in the corner. We're gonna fix that with the cutback. 
trying to create a dream scenario here. So we'll come back with the black and I'll cut that back really quick, just so you can see what I was talking about. All right, let's do a cut back right here. And what that did is we have that outer color on there now, but now we have a nice sharp edge on the inner to create a nice little contrast. Look at that, nice and sharp now, nice and sharp. Now I'm doing a double thick outline. I like double thick outlines. I think it makes a good contrast. All right, this will get a little bit messy, so we'll go ahead and leave that as is. What did I forget here, guys? Looks like I forgot my splash color, didn't I? Yeah, you knew what I forgot. So let's go ahead and fill that in really quickly. Like I said, I am slightly imperfect. And I forget things all the time. So let's go ahead and just fill this in. Cut back with the black. Is that straight? I think that's straight. Yeah, that's straight. That. Do this. And then we'll do one here. One like that. Beautiful. Nice and cut back. We'll have to cut this back too. I'm just gonna cut everything back. We gotta learn about cutbacks. Boy, this works really well off the red, doesn't it, guys? Here. And again, we're doing a double thick outer. So we'll do another line here. Just to make it nice and rich. Because again, we don't have a lot of outer going. Better. All right, we'll do a line here, and a line here. The double outer, baby. But that's what cutbacks are for. That's what cutbacks are for. Which is good because I saved the black we still got to do our mini 3D's and a few other things, so let's get this going in here. Here comes the shines, guys. This is the part where you gotta turn the lights on your piece. I got, I just only got a little bit of this, this white left, so I can't do really big ones, but we'll drop some in there. Uh, I got the Molotow soft blue cap on this, and let's check it out. So, let's go ahead, and just make some nice juicy shines. Like I said, I'm not gonna go all the way. Just some little bits. Shininess to offset everything here. Let's one right there. Let's do one up here. Like I said, the shine is a great way to cut back. Oh, 
We'll fix that with the black in a second. Like I said, I'm not perfect. And as you see, I'm just going back over those cutbacks with the shines anyways. That's kind of why I don't. That's kind of why I don't do a lot of cutbacks in the first place. Because chances are, I'm probably going to go over it with the shine. So let's, let's just do it up. All right, so right here, it looks like my shine got a little wonky. So we're gonna cut that back with the black. Perfect. Sticking up these mini 3Ds. Get those mini 3Ds nice and thick. Maybe cut back any little white highlights that you don't like. So I'm basically done with the piece, so I just want to hit off one of my homies, Beehiver. Again, you know, it's always good to, even if you're painting your homie, hit off your other homie. You feel me? So let me do a little Beehive tag. And I think, I think the next piece I film with Ed, we're going to do a Beehive piece. Because it's been about at least a year since I've done one, so let's, let's do that on our next video. I think you guys would really like to see Beehive hit up, and uh, honestly, I would too. Big beehive ready. Oh, I just touched the paint. So let me. Let me do another little hit off over on the other side here. You know I haven't hit off in a while is Elams. Always gotta hit off your homies, man. Let them know you're thinking about them. You know what I'm saying? So alright. I think I'm basically done, so let me give you guys a quick rundown of what we did. So we did the big fill with the perp, the current, and then we did some bits with the aqua light. After that, we came with the grape and did some bubbles and did some bits on there. Then we brought the light piglet pink, did some of the pink stars on there. Then we brought the cacao 77, did some bit pieces inside there with the cacao 77. Then we went back with those other previous colors to go back over the Cacao 77, just to give it a little bit more depth. After that, we did our outline, we did our outer outer, and now we're done. Simple as that, guys. I know you can do it. I got, I got faith in you guys. But well, hold on one second. Let me make this little mini 3D better. There we go. That's more like it. This should be even. So I'll take the green and snap that right there. Again, don't forget the Mini 3D, guys. The Mini 3D just gives you a little bit more pop. All right, guys, we're all done. I did a quick little go over my homie, writing my homie's name, getting out of my comfort zone, because honestly, like, I have a lot of trouble with O's. That's not, that's not a letter that calls to me very well. But, you know, again, it's fun to get yourself out of your comfort zone, writing someone else's name, giving them love, giving them respect, also giving you a chance to step outside of that spot and try something new. Because that, that is how you will make yourself a better artist. That is how you will do it. When you, when you always step up your game, try something new, you will put yourself in another echelon that'll get you to that point. So highly recommend it. But anyways, it's been a pleasure, guys. I really enjoyed painting this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, oh, one last uh, tip that I would recommend. Don't drink three cups of coffee like I did before I came here. <laughs> I had a bitch of a time trying to hold my kid. <laughs> Stay away from the coffee when you're doing outlines. Trust me. Um, but anyways, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. 
And always, always, always come to Art Primo when you need graph supplies. Because we got what you need and we crush the game, baby. We crush the game. But yeah, stay up. I'll see you on the next video, guys. Peace.